I know in the coatings industries, we, we measure things in glugs, right? 5% is three glugs, um, mm -hmm. I think. Ah, looks like he's cleaning off a four inch roller. Dumping some paint in a cut bucket here, watering it down, mixing it. Okay. Putting it in his uh, roller pail and dumping some into a cut bucket. Got some stuff on the floor there. Very, just plop that brush in there and slap it around. That way you can really get that watered down paint splattering everywhere. Good idea. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> this hurts my heart. <laughs> you know, and, and there you go. This is one of those that I wish I would have been able to see the bucket of paint. I watched this, went back and forth on this video a couple of times. I was trying to figure out what the product was to see why he was watering. He didn't add a ton of water to that product, or um, but typically a manufacturer only says five to ten percent to thin it down at max. Um, I don't know the amount that they put in if that is that five to ten percent, but ninety nine times out of hundred, there's no reason to thin product. Um, you know, it comes ready to rock and roll to whatever application you're doing. It is the proper thickness. Now I say that, and I now thought of 22 different products that do specifically say, but they will say on the label, add 20% water or thin to 50-50. It says it right on the label. There's a dilution ratio. And typically with the coatings, you don't need it unless you're doing sort of a whitewash, which, you know, that's might be what they're doing with this floor. Um, but like you said, if you're not, you just made a mess all over the floor. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, with with regards to this, I, I everything you said is spot on. As a rule, I don't cut my paint with water. Th this, this guy, it just seemed like he, just from what I saw, he just took a a, a can of water and just went glug glug glug, and. I know in the coatings industries, we, we measure things in glugs, right? It's not necessarily X amount of, you know, ounces or whatever, it's glugs. But I the I know some old school painters that will will cut their, uh, they'll thin out their cut paint with water. And they, they claim it flows better, which, I mean, it probably does because it's thinner, right? It, it probably does. But you run into some problems potentially here. Now, if, if, if you're over watering it down, which I can't say he is or isn't, you're changing the color, right? Because the, everything is scientifically for this area. Now the color in your, your cut bucket and your roller bucket is slightly off. You're potentially changing the sheen ever so slightly. And it's not gonna match even what's in the original bucket. It'll be slightly off. So that's one problem. The other problem, is he just made an absolute mess with everything. I, I don't know why he needed to use like the the mixing whip to 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 mix that small amount of paint. I mean, if you were gonna do that, that's where having a stir stick comes in. That mixing whip just kind of like splatters things all over the place. And obviously the the elephant in the room, the floor is not even covered. I mean, the floor looks pretty nice. I'm, I'm assuming that's a finished floor. Maybe it's getting replaced, but we don't know. Yeah, I agree with that. And yeah, I mean, you could see how thin that was. So, you know, why, why were you thinning it more? The product didn't seem like it needed a lot of extra thinning to it. And you're, you're spot on with the sheen changing, the color changing. Um, and if you don't measure it, I mean, there again, like I said, as from the manufacturer standpoint, we, I say five to 10%. Uh, 10 percent is on, on the heavy side you know out of the field you know five percent is three glugs um mm. i think and ten percent <laughs> is 12 glugs i'm not 100 sure. scientific i like that <laughs> we are very very scientific in the uh in the paint industry but you know yeah you, you can really just detract from the paint and then also you're hurting the properties of the paint so adhesion full-on color retention durability on down the road and a lot of manufacturers nowadays have, you know, like their own version of Floetrol, um, which is, you know, been out there ever, which is Floetrol is essentially just paint resin that you add to it, which is actually better for the product. But I know Benjamin Moore makes their own. Um, 
you know, some of the major manufacturers have their own quote unquote flow trawl, which is essentially their paint resin in a bucket, which is designed to thin their own products. So then instead of using water to thin it down, you're adding more resin to the product. So you are still doing the same effect of thinning it, making it more viscous so you can move it around better, but you're not damaging the properties of the paint. You can still change the color and you can still change the sheen a little bit by adding that, but it's not as dramatic. And then overall there again, you've still got the same resin material going in. So you've got full durability, full co color retention. The other thing about this is we don't, what we don't know in this video is, is there, did he actually measure? Because that'd be the next step. If you need to touch up, or if you're going to reproduce this exact product, you need to know that, okay, I added three glugs, which is four ounces of water to this product. So you can then replicate that going forward, especially if the homeowner needs to touch up or if you just need to come back and touch up or, hey, I ran short of material, now I've got to make that same. So you've got to really be careful when you start thinning products and just be wary of all of those steps. Yes, and if he was going to thin this product, or I should, let me rephrase it, if I was going to thin this product, I would get a five-gallon bucket, I would pour this one gallon of material in a five gallon bucket or a two gallon or three gallon bucket whatever a bigger bucket than one gallon is what i'm saying and you find out okay this thing i'm going to thin it 10 percent. well one gallon is 128 ounces so that means you can't go more than 12.8 ounces that's 10 percent, right that's where measuring cups come into place then you you dump that in there you mix it as a whole batch and then you can take for your 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 roller tray and your cut bucket that's how that should be done you, you you don't you don't piecemeal it because it'll never be accurate definitely yeah that's that's a very good point and yeah because you can see they poured it out into the tray and then dumped it at the rest of this little bucket and had still had to mix it up a little bit more um yeah so it, it'd be curious to know really what they're going for i, I want to say that based on the viscosity of this, they're probably going with a whitewash finish. They're going to, I'm with you. I don't know if they're doing the floor. I hope so. Cause they're spilled all over the floor, <laughs> but, um, you know, you just kind of never know with, with what they're doing, but yeah, you just have to follow there again. If you're going to do it, do it step by step. And there again, it says on the, pull up the tech data sheet, go whatever product you're using, go to the manufacturer's website, get the actual tech data sheet. And it will tell you on there, if you need to thin it, thin it with, you know, X, Y, and Z pro either with water or, you know, with the flow trawl or with their own resin. And it will give you the exact amount of whether it be 2% or 5%. And every product is different because you know, that's just the way they make them. Some come thinner out of the bucket. And, you know, we understand in colder temperatures, I see people you thin it out because the paint just does, isn't moving as much. And then in warmer temperatures, you don't have to because that same bucket of paint will move a lot freer because that the molecules are just uh, move around better in warm temperatures. Yes. And, and and a couple more things. They make liners both for those cut buckets and for that, that roller tray that he has. And I'm just telling you, those, those liners are a lifesaver. It saves a ton of cleaning. Then, you know, what's going to happen is this paint is going to dry. And then if you don't get it all the way clean, it's going to be flaking two weeks, three weeks down the road, and you're going to get little chunks in your next project. And then just just the, I'm going to call it a nonchalant way that he just plopped the brush in the paint. Well, now, in addition to getting paint on the floor, now it's all the way up into the bristles. And it's just, that dries and it just, it gums up your brush. I agree. And yeah, dropping it like that, you can just damage the end of the bristles, which is the end of the bristles. The brush is what you need to lay out that nice finish to prevent brush marks and really hold all the paint. Yeah, if you've got the paint all the way up in there, uh, you're essentially wasting paint and it's costing you money because you've got paint that will never come out of that brush that you can't utilize on this job. So that would, which, you know, there again, it's not a ton of paint in that brush, but it's still enough where you could get to the edge of the end of the wall and be like, well, gosh, if I could just get this, squeeze this top paint out, I'd be set. And, you know, that can make, make or break, you know, jumping into another gallon of paint at that point in time. Yeah, it, it all adds up and, and it damages brushes and, all that other stuff. So there's there's a few things to, to button up on here. I agree. And the wheels on this one, they're gonna, if this is a finished floor, the wheel, there's not a lot of weight on this, but if you were to dump more weight into that bucket, um, 
rolling that around. Those are hard wheels. You can scratch the floor. So they're again, covering the floor, being ready if they're doing the walls, you know, just be wary of those types of things. Um, you know, there again, you don't want to inadvertently damage something that then that you're not going to be finishing that you then have to finish, which no homeowner likes that. And you'll be doing that one for free. If you scratch up the floor that they didn't want you to scratch up and refinish. Yes. Good observation. Um, and at the beginning of this video there, they had the, they were pulling blue tape off the roller, which we never see the roller again. So I'm assuming it's a roller tray. So they're going to roll it out. Um, your thoughts on that? Well, they, they, they do that so that they could get the, the loose fibers off the, the roller cover. Some guys will dip them in water because they, they feel that makes it better. Um, a lot of guys do it. There's nothing wrong with it. For, for epoxies, we do that a lot. As far as paint goes, if you get a, a, a good four inch roller cover, you don't really need to do that anymore. That roller looked like it might have been used before. I, I just just kind of how it looked a little frayed to me. I only saw it for half a second, but it, but I don't do that. I don't think it's necessary, and I don't really have any problems with shedding with the ones I use. I agree, and yeah, if you get you know there again, every manufacturer makes a good, better, best, and then the bargain basement ones. The bargain basement ones, there again, it's just you know, less, uh, not as high quality materials and the cores aren't as good. So you do tend to get more shedding, but if you step up, I mean, you're talking going from a $2 roller to a $5 roller, not only with the $5 roller, you're going to get better finish, but you don't have to do that tape because it's going to, the fibers are all going to stay in there. And then, yeah, just, you know, get it seasoned with paint, you know, get up a couple rolls, let it sit there and soak up and then you're ready to go. And you're not going to get pulling fibers out of the wall. Unless, like you said, you're going into epoxies where you've got or a really high gloss finish where you want to guarantee that nothing's going to come out, then you can definitely go that route. But there again, at that point, if you're using that on a better quality roller, all you're doing is loosening up those fibers coming out of that core, pulling them essentially, which could then transfer them into the finish at that point. Yeah, that's a nice point. And just for me, looking at this guy's setup, he's probably buying lower end stuff anyways so he, he probably is going to have a little more problems with with shedding or, or different things like that but you know these are just some really good reminders for professionals and for DIYers of just different things that we can do to prep and literally spending a couple more dollars on something can really save you in the long run as always thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe